Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation about API stories, how to add API value to open API descriptions. First of all, I'm coming to you from Zurich, Switzerland. Like most people, I think, at this conference, I'm a little bit sad that I'm not actually at the conference, but this is as good as it gets. Still a great lineup of speakers, great program, and I'm really looking forward to next year where I guess we're all hoping that things will actually be happening in some place again. Very briefly about myself, my name is Erik Wilde. I have been pretty active in the API conference circuit, so to speak. So I am somebody who has spoken at a lot of API conferences. I've been active in the API space for quite a while. And when the travel stopped, I diverted some of my energy, I'd say, into still producing content. So I'm doing that now partly on YouTube. So if you're interested in API videos, interviews with interesting people, experiences from people who are using APIs, check out my YouTube channel. I do all of this as part of the X-Way Catalyst team. So what is the X-Way Catalyst team? X-Way is a software company. We have 11,000 customers. So it's not a small company, but it's also not a big one compared with some of the really big ones. And um, we sell API software, most importantly, an API gateway and an API platform. As part of this API software that we're selling, we also want to help people to use the software in the best possible way. And we do this with a small team called The Catalyst. I'm one of five people right now. And our mission is to help customers to make the most out of APIs and to then make the most out of whatever infrastructure they put in place. And of course, it's always important to think about not just APIs on a mechanical level, but to really think about what value do APIs really bring. And this is something that I do a lot because I try to get the most value out of APIs and to help customers doing that. And this is why I am speaking to you today about this topic. And before we dive a little bit more into the details that I want to talk about, about API stories, API canvases, and things that you can use to represent API value, I would like to present to you just a little bit where we see API management is moving and why we think that focusing on value more will help the API community and the API space as a whole. One thing that we see more and more happening is that APIs become more and more common. So organizations have more and more APIs, which means that they also need better ways of managing them. And it also becomes clear by now that just having one API management software, one gateway, whatever, is probably not going to work long time and it's going to limit the possibilities that you have. So what you see is that as APIs are becoming more and more common, we have more and more APIs in organizations. So the set of API providers that you see in organizations is constantly growing because you have more and more teams producing APIs and you want that to happen. So this is a good and natural tendency. But this also means that you now have more and more often and we see that when we talk to larger organizations that you more and more have scenarios where these APIs are managed in a heterogeneous way, meaning that they are not coming through just one infrastructure. There's not just one API gateway in place or the APIs are not just running on premise or in one cloud, but you have these scenarios where you have mixes of on premise and clouds, or hybrid infrastructures, or you have multiple clouds. And all of these things are again, natural and good, but they also mean that we now have to think about, you now how do we deal with that? Historically, we had quite a little bit of coupling between gateways and portals, and that probably has to go away over time. And my message is that I think what we can see is that there's a new component that organizations will have to establish that's called a catalog. And you can think of an API catalog as a little bit like an ERP, a, a place where you find all the APIs. And it's focused on helping people to manage APIs and not so much on how to actually implement this management, for example, in different gateways. And then once you have this one component in place, this 
this catalog, the central catalog that will help you to make sure that your API landscape can grow organically and in a heterogeneous way. Then you can put even different portals on top of it, marketplaces, whatever you call these components that allow consumers to find the APIs and to do something with them. Now, this is something that exists that we see more and more organizations either are striving to do or trying to do or sometimes already have in place and because we're at the asc conference right so of course open api plays a really important role here because it allows to to establish this shared language so to speak between api providers and api consumers saying that if you publish an api please describe it in open API, and then we can build all of this in an open way. And this is important, right? Open API really helps us to build this as an open way because all modern tools do support open API in some shape or form, which means we can have this mix of different environments that provide APIs and that consume APIs and open API is the shared language that they're all speaking. And this is good. And of course, I'm a big fan of Open API. But then again, when you think about what we try to do is, of course, we don't just try to connect providers and consumers. We actually try to help the API ecosystem to produce more value. Meaning that in the end, what we want to connect is the, the digital assets that are underlying the APIs. So the actual functionality, the business value that you can access through the API. And we want to connect those to teams building products that use those APIs. And this means that we have to also find a way how we can communicate the value that an API brings. And this is a little different from just the technical specification because the technical specification, of course, is important. Without it, I don't know how to use the API. But I also have to understand how those APIs can help me. And the technical specification often really doesn't help me with that at all. And we speak, like I said, to a lot of organizations. And there is a good chunk of organizations that tell us, yes, we have many APIs and we actually have even maybe a big collection of open API descriptions. But to be honest, we have no idea what these APIs are doing. The open API descriptions are pretty bad at times. So they are just as minimal as you can make them. And even if they're not super minimal, we don't really know what those APIs allows a user to do, and therefore it's really hard to make the APIs really useful. So we have those APIs, but we don't really know how to get the value that they could provide to us. And I think this is really important, and this is why I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about API value. So when you look at what an API's value is, it's not just what an API can do, it is, in the end, also very much about who's actually doing that with the API, right? If nobody uses the world's most useful API, it doesn't provide any value. It could, but if nobody uses it, it doesn't. So it's really important to think about what we need to do to not just create APIs or design APIs and publish them, make them discoverable, allow people to subscribe, allow people to use them, and allow ways how we can provide feedback so that they can be improved. We also have to really think about how we can make this as effective as possible so that this happens a lot. Because in the end, like I said, APIs have to be used. If an API doesn't get used, it's completely worthless. It doesn't provide any value to the organization. And in order to do that, we have to think about how we make this, this whole chain going from design all the way to using and improving the API, how we build this in a way that is open and that it can be automated so that we can scale things because we might have many APIs. And we can do that 
by building an open API platform. And I think it's interesting just, just for a little while to think about what an open API platform, what does it really mean? And you can think about it in two different and interestingly different ways. One is that an open API platform could mean that it's open and any API can be added to it. That's good. And that's definitely a goal you should have, meaning that regardless of where my APIs are being provided, my platform is open so that I can add any APIs to it. And that's the, the catalog idea, essentially, that I was presenting a little bit earlier. But what also is an interesting thought is how can I now add new tools to this whole picture, meaning that my platform itself is open so that, for example, I can add a new marketplace to it that I put on top of it or I connect it to an existing marketplace at a business partner who wants to publish some of my APIs essentially in their marketplace because they're using my APIs, right? These are the really interesting scenarios, but they're also a little bit challenging because now we have to make sure that my catalog can talk to somebody else's marketplace, right? And this is the interesting part about openness, this, which means that now I need to have not just the APIs, but I also need to have this component, the catalog, to be something that is built openly and that in itself can be decentralized. So right now we have a little bit in place, open API, which would allow me to, for example, publish open API descriptions from my catalog to somebody else's marketplace. That's great. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. But now we could also ask, now how can we make that better? What's missing in this picture? And my, my theory here is that what's missing in this picture a little bit is the API value, right? How could I represent the value of my API, describe it to somebody else when I'm doing what I was just saying, like publishing APIs from my catalog to somebody else's catalog. And this is something that you can really think in terms of this picture. It's just sort of a simplified one and rotated one <laughs> of the one I was showing earlier, where I would like to communicate API value end to end, right? From the API provider, who publishes their API into some infrastructure, let's say some gateway from there, it's somehow populated into a catalog. The catalog then publishes into a marketplace and the API consumer sits on top of the marketplace. And this is something where I want to be able to represent API value end to end. And like I said, open API can do it on the technical basis right now and my proposal to today is to look into how can we also turn this into something where we can talk about API value. And if you look at this picture, you could ask yourself, is that even a good idea? Right? Do we want to put stuff into open API that is not really very much about technical details? And I agree, that's a good discussion to have. But I think this discussion, whether you want these things to be out of line, or in line in terms of being embedded into open API, you can kind of avoid those discussions a little bit by saying, well, we just allow a way to be, to represent value in some shape or form. And then we turn that into something that both can be presented in a self-contained way, or it can be embedded, for example, into open API. And then we have the flexibility to say, well, if there are established pathways where we can have an end-to-end -end path, then maybe we can represent those things out of line. But if open API is the only thing that really travels all the way from left to right in that picture, then maybe we want to embed that into open API. And those components who understand that extension then can take advantage of it. And this is what I want to present here. Now let's dive into what I really mean by all of this a little bit deeper. What is API value? And there are many ways you can answer that question. 
And I don't have a definitive answer, but I have two things that I've seen that are used repeatedly, that are used successfully, that we also use in our work with customers. And those two things are stories and canvases. And my proposal is to at least get started with representing API value through those mechanisms. I'm sure there are more, and I really hope I, I'm able to kick off a conversation and we can come up with more ways how to represent value. But I think this is at least a good starting point for the discussion. Let's briefly dive into those things and look at what they do and how we could use them to represent API value in open API and in open API, let's say, supported tool chains. One of these things are user stories. I think we all know user stories. I stole this content here shamelessly from Wikipedia. User stories are most, mostly for describing um, things that you want to be built. And so you write a user story, you say how important it is that something gets done, and if then you decide, okay, now we have the time to do it, you start developing that user story into something that actually is accomplished by a product, by your application, and then hopefully what is in the user story then is something that actually happens. So user stories are a kind of communication mechanism where somebody says what they want to have as a feature, so to speak, or as an ability for a user that there is something that they want to do because it helps them to, 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 to get some benefit out of it. And then there are these whole cycles of, okay, now how do we do it? Now we actually do it. Now we release a new version of the product, for example, where this gets realized. So user story is in part a good starting point to describe why something even exists, right? Where you say, well, we added this feature because we had this user story. That's typically a conversation that you can have. And therefore, I think that user stories are one good way of talking about value and saying that we designed the API in this and this way because we talked to a number of stakeholders in the organization who want to do things in that general space and we came up with these requirements and then we designed an API that satisfies those requirements. Right? And oftentimes these get derived from user stories. The user stories follow a very simple pattern, right? As a whatever, I can do something so that I receive some benefit. And there could be a very simple way to represent it. And what I'm showing here really is nothing but a first proposal. And just as a little bit of background, what we're doing right now is we're working on enabling this kind of end-to-end -end capability to communicate value in our platform because we think it's important. And right now, we're, I would say we're focusing on the mechanics. How do we actually make it work? How do we allow people to add this information? How do we surface it, for example, in the catalog? And this is something that, of course, needs to be done. But I also want to kick off a conversation in the wider community. And what better place could there be than the ASC conference? What the best representation might look like. And I'm not claiming that my really simplistic representations are perfect, but maybe they're a starting point. So this could be a very simple way of representing a user story. right? So, Shown here, very simple JSON, right? You could say a, a value proposition for an API has as one facet of this value proposition, a set of stories, and a story has a way how I can find the authoritative source. So it's documented somewhere, maybe in some internal system. So there's a link there. And then there are these very simple things where it just has a title. It has this as a, a persona, I can, and then the kind of thing he wants to do, and then so that the, the benefit that I derive from doing that. And that is, like I said, a very simple way how you can represent that. But I do believe that it's something that would help us to at least make it easier for people to look at an API and understand, for example, which user stories were underlying 
the creation of that API. And they might find themselves in those user stories. And it's certainly, that's my, that's my convic uh, I'm convinced by that, that certainly will help them better than reading the API specification. So, because it's much more centered around what somebody can get out of the API, what they want to do with it, and what benefit they derive. So that's the user story. Now let's jump into my second example of how you can represent value, and that would be a canvas. So a canvas is something that I think started back with um, Alex Osterwalder's business model canvas. I think that's the uh, first popular canvas, at least that I know of, which was and is a tool to think about in a structured way why your business really makes sense, right? What, who, who is my customer? What am I doing for them? Who is my competition? What are the limiting factors that I that I'm seeing, right? So it's really a tool that helps you to think about your business, this original thing in a structured way, and therefore it can be very valuable. It's, it's like an, it's a design exercise in the end that you go through. And again, it's much more high level and much more value oriented than just thinking about, let's say the mechanics of a business. And therefore it, it has become a tool that a lot of people use and find useful. And it, it's, I would say it's similar and I'm sure people would disagree, but it's similar to user stories in the same way that it, it establishes a higher level communication channel where people can talk about a business, an API. And therefore, I think it also is a very interesting idea. And we've seen that in a variety of canvases that have been proposed, kind of showing the history here of those that I know. So there's something called the microservice design canvas um, started, I think, by Matt McLarty and Irak Bin Ardersvili. And um, there's some variations of it, James Higginbotham and Chris Richardson. I know of the value proposition interface canvas uh, that has been popularized by Amansi Buza. And then we also have the API ops cycles canvases that are also seeing, I think, quite a bit of uptake. What such a canvas can look like here, I have an example that I took from uh, James. Hey, James, thanks. <laughs> and um, it shows you the microservices canvas. And again, you see the, just the structured way of how it puts those different things you should think about into a way how you can look at it and say, OK, have we covered everything we need to talk about and think about? And there is a similarly simplistic JSON that you could look at for exchanging those canvases. And I'm, I'm not quite sure how far we would like to go to standardize like on one canvas. So, so here, what I say, a value proposition for an API could be even a number of canvases if you have different ones you want to use. Because there can be different ones, you probably want to uh, identify that canvas type with some kind of type identifier. You also might want to link to the authoritative place where this specific canvas is living. And then you have a number of these fields corresponding to those boxes we've seen in the canvas that would just represent what we see on the canvas. And again, you could easily render this then into a canvas if you know what the canvas type asks for in terms of the layout. And for what we play around with right now, what we are assuming is that what you put in there is just markdown. Um, and then that makes it relatively simple to represent canvases. OK, and that's it. So really, what I wanted to do was just show you the direction in which we're looking, because I think this is the direction which the general API space is moving. And mostly, really, I wanted to hopefully start a discussion on how can we make this end-to-end -end discussion or communication around API value better? So how can we communicate API value end-to-end -end from API provider to API consumer in heterogeneous API landscapes? And I think some standardization would help. And again, which better place would be um, 
the right one to, to start this discussion than the AAC conference. Right? So I think some standardization would be great. And like I said, we're working on making that part of our tool chain. But ideally, of course, this would be not just our tool chain, but it would be something that others are interested in and support as well. Because then we can start enabling tools to support this information across different tools, across the whole API landscape. And I think then we get the most out of it. And definitely the organizations using APIs will start to see some benefits so that they can more easily combine tools and still can use that information. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to look at the slides for this presentation, you can find them here. If you want to find more information about myself, you can find me on Twitter, on YouTube, and LinkedIn, or just on Google. And uh, with that, thanks very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference. All the best from Zurich again. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay, good. So I, I have some questions in the chat and I will just go through them one by one. So thanks a lot. And if, if you do have questions, um, please put them in the Q&A um, section, not in the chat, sorry. And there's a specific Q&A part of uh, that little side panel. So th the first question is by uh, Sanjay Dalal. Hey, Sanjay, good to see you here. Thanks for joining. Um, and he's asking, would you also value, would you also uh, have the API value based on how much revenue it brings and or how much cost it saves? And, uh, that's a good point, actually. So um, I would probably put that, at least in terms of how we mostly use that with our customers, into sort of the KPIs you put around an API. Right? And, and these are good KPIs, I think. So typically, we group KPIs by, um, by growth by sort of efficiency, so so how much how much can I grow, how much money, how much money can I save, and then also often there is like a, a risk category, so three categories mostly. And I think so putting KPIs in there also might make sense. I think uh, thinking about it only right now, um, but it's a, it's a good suggestion. I would probably put that next to the stories and the, the canvas and say, yeah, that's another way of how I can think about the API in terms of like how is success measured for this API? How do I look at this API in terms of what, I, what I'm expecting from it? So yeah, I think that, that is a, it's a good idea to put there. So if, if we move forward with that, I think that would be a good third candidate for that whole bucket where you can talk about um, API value. Next question is by Tony Castro Giovanni, I hope I didn't mangle that name too badly. Thanks, Tony. What's the difference between a developer portal and what you are outlining here as an API catalog? And there are two main differences, I would say. So at least sometimes portals, developer portals, are very specifically just sitting on top of one platform or on top of one gateway. Let's put it like this, right? So they are for one specific gateway. So they provide developers access to all the APIs that are managed within that infrastructure. That is relatively limiting, so the catalog would be something that overcomes this. And the other thing is that a developer portal often is really only one view that you have into the APIs that you might have. And, and the catalog, at least the way how we right now are using that model, is to say the catalog is kind of a source of truth where you have all the information about your APIs and then you push that into, so to speak, different portals or marketplaces, depending on the consumers that you want to give access to certain APIs. So a developer portal then would sit on top of a catalog instead of being next to it. Next question would be by Rahul Dige, maybe. Do you view the user stories embedded within specs uh, mainly for internal audience or external users? Um, I would say, given, you know, given our model of having this catalog in the middle, I would say it depends on who you publish the APIs to and what your goal is. So if you want to expose information about value and you want to explain why this API exists and what typical usages look like and why it's designed in that way, then I would 
assume and hope that these things would be exposed to anybody who's who's intended as an audience and that could be internal as well as external. So the next question then is by Jeremy Thiel. Following this example, does Gherkin have a place in OAS? Um, I don't know. I think that's that's a different could be. I know I know that there is probably is some people have a very strong opinion about you know open API being very specific and I I think that that's a good thing to keep in mind. But on the other hand, I think trying to make the extension space of OP, Open API a little bit more dynamic and giving the ability to have more things that can show up at least in Open API, I think that will just hope with that will help with this with this openness of the whole landscape and the tooling that can pick up these things that may fl flow through through tool chains. So I think. Um, I think it would be good if we had a little bit more dynamic in, in, in the space of what we can embed into OpenAPI. And there is a last question. Have you thought about extensions about API personas and API customer journey map to generate mock services automatically? Um, just a little bit. So the API personas mostly, to, to my mind, they came because, well, in the user stories, you also have personas coming up, right? So the question then is, well, maybe you should document those personas so that you can kind of relate the user story to the persona. So in, in that context, um, yes, definitely. Right now, in the very minimal model that, that we just use to kind of play around with our tool chain for now, we don't have that. We really have the simple model that I showed you, but uh, that's definitely something we could have. An uh, API customer journey map. Um, sure. It, I think for now, um, it's something where really all the more artifacts we can represent, right? And, and the more artifacts we can represent in a way where we can agree on a way to do it, the more we can build open tooling and the more we can build tooling where People then can go and say, oh, I'll use this, this tool for this, and I'll use that tool for another thing, and they can actually talk to each other and exchange information in a meaningful way and, for example, render it um, in some, some catalog or some marketplace or whatever you want to use. So, so I think mostly what I want to do with, with this presentation specifically was to kick off some discussion in terms of wouldn't that be something that is useful? And, and like I said, we're definitely doing it because we, at least in our tool chain, we want to make that possible. But I think it would be better if it's not just us doing it, but if it was more of a collaborative effort where we had, for example, different tool vendors collaborating around this and then putting that into some effort that, for example, then could be coordinated by um, the OpenAPI specifications community. And that's the reason why I'm here. Okay, so I think that was it, going through all the questions. Thanks a lot for your questions. If you have any other feedback, if you have any ideas, anything, feel free to reach out. I guess I'm easy to find. And um, I think then that's it for now. So once again, thanks a lot, and uh, goodbye from Zurich, Switzerland. See you soon.